somewhere around three to four months old, you're likely finding that your baby is no longer just stationary in their crib or bassinet. They're trying to move this way and move that way and it is totally normal, but you are mildly freaking out because all of a sudden you see on the monitor that they've rolled onto their belly in the crib and you're like, what's happening? In this podcast episode and YouTube video, I'm going to explain and give you the steps and give you the peace of mind of what to do when your baby starts to roll around in the crib. Hey there, I'm Becca Campbell, your pediatric sleep consultant. Welcome to the Little Z Sleep YouTube and podcast channel. This is our place, you guys, to help you make sleep a thing. If you are a family who loves sleep and who cherishes every single minute and hour that your baby sleeps for you and that you get to sleep, you're in the right place. But sometimes it can start to slip away as your baby learns new skills like rolling. So let me just come out right away and say that when your baby learns a new skill, it will impact sleep. There will be a slight regression period. It's not gonna be peachy perfect anymore, but that's okay. We're gonna talk about all of the things that you can help them do as they practice rolling and get comfortable with rolling in their crib. Now, if you're watching this as a family who sleep is not a thing, your baby does not know how to sleep independently. They're in the bassinet, they're in the crib, or they're sometimes with you, and sleep is just non-existent, and you're like, how do I even get my baby to close their eyes? That was me eight years ago when Googling desperately, how do I get my baby to sleep? Because my four-month-old was not sleeping at all. I wasn't even concerned about rolling because she wasn't sleeping, period. If that's you, I have a free course that I want you to grab. It's called The Four Steps to Solve Your Baby's Night Wakings. Inside this course, it takes less than 30 minutes for you to listen to the videos, but you can implement it tonight. I'm going to walk you through bedtime routine, sleep expectations, so that you can start getting on the right path of sleep. I've had families implement this and they're like, Becca, this was awesome. It was free and it fixed my sleep problems. Good, that's the point. You deserve to be happy, healthy, and well-rested, and we want you to get your hands on this. So check out our free four steps to solve your baby's night waking course in the links below or head to littlezsleep.com slash four, that's the number, four steps. I will never forget the morning that I walked into Hattie's room and she was on her stomach. And then later on, she was like sitting up. And it's these moments of like, how did you know how to do that? That just totally freak you out as a parent because it's new and it's different and it's gonna cause some bumps in sleep, but I don't want you to worry about that. Let's just first of all celebrate. Obviously your baby is growing and developing and that is something to celebrate and love. Now I opened up this video saying that between three to four months, your baby is starting to roll. So before I even get into things, we need to talk about perhaps your baby is not three to four months. Maybe they're five to six months and they're not quite rolling. Let's first of all, give your baby the freedom. So here's my checklist. Your baby, when they start to show signs and they start to roll, there should be no more swaddle, okay? So I teach at Little Z's, inside of my newborn sleep course, we are swaddle free by 12 weeks. That is the last call for swaddles. If you have a baby who is older than 12 weeks and you're like, Becca, I have to swaddle them because their startle reflex, their moral reflex is so strong, wakes them up. I need to tell you in a no fluff way, as I do, your baby is never going to learn how to use their arms and legs, well they will, but they're never going to be able to get past that startle reflex if you continue to swaddle them. So you gotta get them out of the swaddle because that's how they're going to learn. That will mean that they will have a few nights of disrupted sleep, but you need to get their arms free so that they can learn how to use their arms and use their body to self-soothe. So if you are listening to this video and your baby is older than 12 weeks, it's time to go cold turkey on the swaddle. Get your baby's arms out and let them use their arms and their hands, maybe their fingers to suck on and their hands to help roll around. That's what we want. So let's make sure their arms are free. If your baby is under 12 weeks and they've started to roll, we definitely need to get them out of the swaddle so that they can be safer and maneuver their body, okay? The next thing I just wanna check off before we get to our strategies is that at this point, when your baby's now rolling, we need to give them more space. So let's get out of the bassinet and into the crib. We want to have this space so that they can find their most comfortable position. 
I've typically found that when the baby starts to roll around, they like to get close to the edge or they like to find the corner and wedge their head up in the corner. And in these cases, you may be really tempted to get mesh bumpers or any type of bumpers because, ah, oh, I don't want them banging their head on the side of the crib. Here at Little Z's, we ascribe to the American Academy of Pediatric Standards, which means nothing, no mesh bumpers, no bumpers, no nothing in that crib. It is not needed. And so I know it may feel like, oh, they're gonna bump their precious little head on the crib rails. They're gonna be fine. Um, they're going to roll over there and nestle up next to it, but they're not in pain over those crib rails. So please don't use any bumpers as they are starting to explore their environment. Okay, so safety is set. We're swaddle free. We have no bumpers in the crib. Your baby's in the crib. Now we're good to go. So the first thing you can do, if you start to notice that your baby is wanting to roll in the crib, they're rolling on the floor, increase their tummy time during the day. Just increase it by 15 minutes, okay? Little bits, we're not looking for hours at a time on tummy time, but if we can get them on a play mat on the floor and give them the opportunity to start to use their rolling skills, that's great. A long time ago, I had a family, they named an exercise the sushi roll. We were talking about using a swaddle blanket to lift the baby up and help them learn how to roll. This family dubbed it the sushi roll method. I still love that name. And so I wanna share with you this video. If you're watching on YouTube, obviously you can see this. If you're listening on the podcast, click the link to the blog so you can actually go watch this video if you want to get eyes on how to do what we call the sushi roll. I'm gonna do the sushi roll. Oh, look at the sushi roll. Oh, yes. Good job. And what happens when Good you go job. back? And what happens when you go back? And there we go. Wow. Oh my goodness. So giving your baby opportunity to practice during the day, how to be on their belly, how to move their body. And remember, it's okay. Part of learning how to roll is part of the struggle. You'll probably find that your baby's trying to figure out how do I get my arm out from underneath my stomach and how do I get my leg over? This is all part of the process. Think about the videos and things when kids start to learn how to walk and they're falling down. It's the same thing. They're not gonna nail it the first time. So just give them practice during the day, increase their tummy time during the day. Additionally, not just maybe on the floor of your house, but get your little one in their crib to practice because here's the wild thing. Um, your baby could be a pro at rolling on the living room floor. Like no problem, they're like a rolling machine. But all of a sudden they get in their crib and they're like, wait, I don't know what to do here. This is a new soft environment, softer, not remember, firm flat mattress, you guys. But it's softer, it's a little bit different and they kind of freak out a little bit. If that's the case, if you're finding that your baby kind of like forgets how to roll when they get in their crib, then okay, with all the lights on, the sun is streaming in, maybe you've got some laundry to put away or you just wanna tidy up your baby's room or restock the diapers or something, put your baby in the crib while you're maybe doing some tasks in the room. I'm not talking for an hour, I'm talking for like 15 to 20 minutes and give them a chance to practice. How to roll in their crib, how do they move their body around? Giving them some time to practice, not just on the floor, but also in their crib, it's all going to add to the muscle memory that your baby is learning and practicing as they are figuring out, how do I roll? Instead of being frustrated by this skill, because I'm about to talk about how it will interrupt nighttime sleep, think about how many times at night you change positions. I'm a tummy sleeper myself, and so I frequently go from one side to the other and roll around. Learning how to roll, this is a self-soothing skill. Have you ever thought about that? You and I know how to sleep because we can be in full control of how we are best suited and soothed in our positions. And so the same thing is happening with your baby. So let's celebrate that. But it will likely cause some sleep interruptions in the nighttime. So here's how we can handle that. I'm not a monster. So if you really believe that your baby is stuck, they've rolled and they can't get back over and they're not super confident, you have every permission to not wait any amount of time, just go right into your child's crib, into their room. I call this ninja style. You're gonna ninja style flip them over and then leave, almost as if like they don't even realize what's happening. Um, don't linger, don't like, okay, now let's go back to sleep and help them soothe. This is a principle of my sleep programs. We are fostering independent sleep. You're not helping them get drowsy. You're helping them flip back over if they are truly stuck. So flip them over and then leave the room. Now, how many of you have noticed you ninja style flip them, you leave the room only to look on the monitor and they did it again. 
Now, you could go in there and flip them, and you could do that all night long, and no one's gonna get any sleep, but there will come a night where you don't see that they flipped over, and they're not struggling anymore because they've learned how to do this. This is something that you need to use your best parental decision-making on, because I'm not in your house, I don't know your baby, but what I want you to know is that there will come a time where you need to stop flipping them back over because they are choosing to be on their stomach. And if you've practiced during the day, both on the floor and in their crib, this is what part of growth is, is them learning how to roll. So I'm giving you permission to go flip them over if you feel like they are struggling and they need help. But don't lose nine hours of sleep at night because you're just flipping them over all night long and then your baby's frustrated and tired because they could never get in the position that they were trying to. So yes, you may be just like watching the monitor like a hawk, you may lose sleep that night, but just know there will come a morning when you wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, you're on your stomach and you run in there just to make sure they're okay. This is a, sometimes like a badge in parenting is that first morning to learn how to roll or the first morning you go in and they're sitting up looking at you and you're like, how did you just learn how to sit up? All these little things are just adding to the memories that you're making with your kid. And I'm just letting you know that you don't need to feel guilty if you missed it, but it's normal to go in there and flip them. But it's also going to be a time where you fall asleep and they fall asleep and they are safe. They've learned how to roll. They're la mastering the skill and they've got it. They're learning how to self-soothe, which is really cool. Congratulations in a way. Rolling is like the very first milestone physically that we're looking at that impacts sleep. So please know you may have some bumpy nights as your little one maybe is trying to figure it out. Within a week or two, things are gonna be right back on track. And that's why this is a regression, okay? I have a whole video on is it a regression or is it a habit? So check that out if it's been over two weeks and you've been blaming it on rolling. It's probably now some habits that have been ingrained. And all of this is just a celebration that your baby is growing. They are happy, healthy, and well-rested. And that is something that we want to celebrate with you. Don't forget, if you need some real sleep help, check out our free Four Steps to Solve Your Baby's Night Wake Gains. It's a free course that takes under 30 minutes for you to listen to. So check that out in the links below or head to littlezsleep.com slash four steps. Thank you so much for being here. Sweet dreams. See you next time.